this week, I saw a tweet on my Twitter timeline, and by one second instantly, I was turned off and had to make a tweet about how horrible, disingenuous, and naive it was. And this tweet is from an animation YouTuber named Ask Air. At the time of making this video on Friday, August 30th, he has 30k subscribers. He published a video he made called Modern Cartoon Reboots Are Unfaithful Trash. I ultimately was appalled when I saw the title of that video. And today, as a longtime former avid viewer of the Bear Leon parents, I'll give my takes on Askir's video. The other day I had an epiphany. I was scrolling mindlessly through my phone as one does and i came across this monstrosity the fairly loud parents reboot and it was just as bad as i expected it to be look at my mask with my boy mindless drivel plot lines flashy art style and an overt unfaithfulness to the source material and i realized these phenomena are not unique to the fairly odd parents these symptoms carry on to many remakes and reboots that have sprouted from hollywood in the last few years whether it's animated or live action movie or tv show and if this were just a one-off thing in media i probably wouldn't be making this video but this is a repeated cancer that is spreading to more and more properties and is only destructive in nature and so i gotta take the mantle and expose just what makes these properties so inherently bad let's go okay number one the fairly on parents a new wish is not a reboot it's a sequel if it was a reboot then it would have been called the fairly on parents and number two if you even watched the original show itself during its 1D era in the early 2000s. You'd already knew that this show has been flashy. I mean, that's how viewers be knew before and grown up with it. And guess what? It didn't bother my generation back then. It wouldn't bother the new generation as they would witness the show we grew up from in a new chapter. Oh. It was originally the Fairly Odd Parents Trash reboot number one that inspired me to make this video, but now they want to make another one. And what is animated, that's where I draw the line. I'm old enough to remember back in Yale 2016 when everyone was trashing the new reboot at the time, Teen Titans Go. And it was the Powerpuff Girls, Ben 10 reboot, Rise of TMNT, the list goes on. No one really respects reboots as an inherent property, especially in the manner that they're handled in our modern era. The real reason why you people don't respect reboots is because you don't give it a chance. You always had to use your keyboard for your crybaby towers of typing and immediately hate before it even airs or after you watch only one episode and call it quits forever. I never listen to anyone online that has a terrible negative opinion on reboots. It's almost a safe opinion these days to say, ooh, Hollywood unoriginal, Hollywood bad. But when you take a deeper look at it, you realize it's not just about the unoriginality. These Disney reboots do more than just rip off the original for monetary gain. No, no, no. They actually disrespect the source material while they do it. They have to warp the brand to their liking, whether it's for monetary, social, or storytelling purposes, if you really want to give them that credit. See, people like you are always dismissive of the movies Disney makes because you rather attack them for making good movie reviews instead of giving it a chance. Plus, these movies have made millions of dollars, which means people like them. So your opinion on Disney ripping off the original for monetary gain is invalid. You should always give movies like this a chance before you disingenuously judge. This Teen Titans Go Syndrome has only gotten worse nowadays because instead of just telling unfunny stories, modern reboots, especially in the animated realm, aim to purposely disrespect the original vision. I'll have you know that Teen Titans Go is still the most watched, highly successful show in Cartoon Network history. So no, Teen Titans Go is not aimed to disrespect the original vision. Starting off with the fact that the original creators don't want this kind of stuff, almost ever. We've all heard of how Steven Hillenburg never really wanted to reboot of Spongebob, but ever since his late passing, Nick has capitalized on two already, with both thankfully pulling in little to no ratings. You do realize that he never definitely say that he doesn't want any spin-offs, right? 
because this person said that the whole Hillenberg being against Spongebob spin-offs thing turned out to be a real-life part of Hillenberg's history that didn't even happen or come out of Hillenberg's mouth during his lifetime to begin with. He continues on to say, but what was new about him? I found out that Black Rhino Ranger is that Stephen Hillenberg is prone to change his mind every once in a while which could explain why Vincent Waller had to break the news that in 2021 that Steven Helberg already knew about Camp Carl before his death to the ALS in 2018. You can go read the rest of it yourselves in the description. When a reboot is properly wanted by the creators, it usually does quite well and actually delivers true to the vision. But when it doesn't, it's just a floundering attempt to show what was good and unique and cash in on someone else's creation. The Ben 10 reboot ran successfully for four seasons, so your opinion is invalid. I'll have you know that I happen to be one of those people that watched the reboot back in 2017 and I have loved it ever since. Plus, it's one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time. Let's give it bright saturated animation to the point where kids get a corneal ulcer. Why not? Kids like colors, right? I feel like everything I'm saying only relates to reboots post-2010. Because prior to that, most reiterations weren't like this. Most were better than the originals and actually kept gritty tones with cool brooding art styles. Now it's just a rainbow contest to see which show is brighter than the rest. Maybe that'll keep the kitties in their seats a little longer. So what? Who cares, dude? There are people who love shows like this. It ain't for you to have a say. Let's make all the characters flanderized and dumb while we're at it. It's connected to dumb people more, right? Else give us a cheap way of actually creating humor. Stupid people are funny. These modern reboots just go back to square one while ignoring all the story arcs that preceded them with a cheap looking animation style and much shallower characters. And they expect folks to be all on board and excited when they announce one. Don't forget the forced memes and trends, discussing imagery and weird detailed faces. A lot of them dish the grand arcs of storylines for a slice of like episodic show or out of any substance or long term stakes. And look, I've made a whole different video explaining explaining how being more mature or focused on story doesn't necessarily make a show better. That video gives a lot more nuance than I'm frankly giving here. But listen, part of a reboot is a fan service that you never really have to deliver to the original fans of the old property. You can't just say you're delivering something new for the current generation while abandoning the people who made your franchise what it is by watching all those years ago. Don't worry. If you don't like the reboot shows because it made the characters dumb, because you claim that they ignore all the story arc, and because you hate the so-called forced memes and trends, discussing imagery and weird faces, don't watch. I wouldn't give a damn about this. I'd still watch it. Don't ruin our childhoods for your own creative laziness. It just makes you ask, why? Not to mention how they unnecessarily have to, all of a sudden, change everything about the show. I mean, no one wants to talk about it, but the current bandwagon is the whole race swapping thing they love to do with animated characters. April O'Neil, Timmy Turner, Velma, etc. Okay, let me stop you right there. Hazel Antoinette Wells is a 10-year-old African-American girl who is the current godchild of Cosmo and Wanda after she moved to Dimadelphia with her family because her dad is starting a new job. Hazel is anything but a black Timmy Turner, you racist, white, nasally, low IQ male. Oh, by the way, guess who Hazel is being voiced by? If you guessed Ashley Crystal Hairston, you are correct. The reason why I'm telling you this is because Asker stupidly thinks that a sequel from the Fairly Apparents franchise is race swapping, which that argument has become overdone and dry since 2016. And there's the whole voice actress thing. Remember when Hank Azaria was shamelessly ousted from playing Apu in The Simpsons because he wasn't the race of the character? In the New York Times article from February 25th, 2020, Hank Azaria says himself that once I realized that was the way this character was thought of, I just didn't want to participate in it anymore. It just didn't feel right. Therefore, Hank Azaria made his own decision he was never replaced by executive producers of The Simpsons, who, by the way, rejected Hank's journey in regard to Ampu. We have granted his wish to no longer voice the character. So to answer this stupid question, no, 
he was not shamelessly ousted for playing up who in the Simpsons. Because I do. It's almost like actors are supposed to portray things that are not. Here's another shocker. This guy is actually not an anthropomorphic sponge. I mean, it's not just his area. It just happened to Mike Henry, too, for playing Cleveland Brown. Mike Henry made his own decision to be stepping down from the role he once played four years ago. Allison Brie literally apologized for playing Diane from Bojack because the character was Vietnamese. Oh, so if a Vietnamese person has to voice that character and she feels so sorry about it, will she donate all the money she made on that show to Vietnamese charities? Or no, is it just a bunch of false outrage for a non-issue no one genuinely cares about? Look, even if you're right about the fact an actor is supposed to portray as something they're not, that doesn't mean these white voice actors and white voice actresses should portray as the non-white character they're not comfortable with. When everything is racial, that's the only thing I can see when watching. I never saw Blade as a black character or the static shock. I don't understand why you don't see them as black. Do you not understand racial ethnicities? Because Virgil Hawkins, aka Static Shock, is black and Victor Stone, a.k.a. Cyborg, is half black human, half robot. Static shock. A lot of my favorite characters are people with various ethnicities and racial tone. The black female Timmy Turner is clearly just a cheap attempt to reboot this property without any other significant pitches for change. The Fairly Odd Parents sequel is not a reboot, and it's not a cheap attempt at all. If anything, dude, you're refusing to accept change because you're brainwashed by these right-wing anti-SCW racist online who have failed time and time again to contribute to having a reasonable conversation on racial ethnicities. I mean, for the diversity folks, there must be a point where this hurts the cause more than it helps it. This video isn't just about the new race swapping phenomenon, but it's an extremely prevalent symptom of a larger issue, which ties into the lack of respect for staying faithful to the original property. Maybe Butch Hartman wants Timmy to be race and gender swapped, which is why he has absolutely no direct involvement in the creative department of the project. I find that unlikely. It's absolutely insulting to ruin a person's original vision of a character just because people want to see themselves on screen. Yeah, about that. Hey everybody, I am so thrilled I can finally talk about this. We're making a brand new Fairly Odd Parents animated series, and it looks like this. It is called A Brand New Wish, and it's going to premiere this spring with the original voice actors who play Cosmo and Wanda, Darren Norris, and Suzanne Blakesley. It's going to premiere on Netflix and Nickelodeon. I couldn't be more thrilled. When they first uh, told me they wanted to do this and they presented these designs to me, I was really excited because not only will it have the same charm and um, excitement and flair of the original series, it's going to look a little different, but I really love these character designs. I think they're super appealing. What do you guys think? Are you excited about this? Let me know. I think it's abracatastic. So saying that it's absolutely insulting to ruin a person's original version of a character just because people want to see themselves on the screen is abhorrent and disgraceful. I'm Haitian, so if I had a TV show character that looks like me, I'd be thrilled to see someone that is Haitian on a cartoon show. People of all different ethnic backgrounds would love to see a TV character that represents them. That's the whole fucking point. These people are too uncreative to create their own original stories, so they need to ruin existing stuff to be able to call themselves inclusive and hip with the times. This absolutely also hinders the story and episode quality, as the main selling point here is the obvious element that's right in front of us, but no one's allowed to acknowledge it for some reason. I mean, watch a single episode of Rise, A New Wish, Patrick Star, or Camp Coral, and you'll see that. Even those shows are unfaithful to the source material. Here we go again. You're misleading the things that Stephen didn't actually say. Because if you can read here, it says that he reportedly approved the idea for Camp Coral. And the SpongeBob SquarePants showrunner Vincent Waller says that Stephen was aware that Camp Coral was being developed before his unfortunate passing. Vincent Waller also says that saying the I don't see any spin-offs is in no way saying I would never do a spin-off. Just like when he said he had no interest in doing a movie, yet lo and behold, not only did he make a movie, but he took in three of them. So can we give a rest that he would nevers? 
It's not just about the race swapping issue. Being unfaithful has different forms. And the reason I focus on that issue is because it's the most prevalent at this point in time. Maybe 10 years ago, the discussion was about a completely different form of unfaithfulness. Still, some shows suffer from that. I mentioned SpongeBob. There are plenty of other examples. I just despise seeing a person's work be disrespected when they likely sacrificed like hell to turn into a reality. And some studio exec can just demand a reboot of it for ratings and completely change the original character into something just to appeal to the bandwagon. What? All those things that you're blaming Nickelodeon executives for is not true. Stephen Hillenberg himself greenlit it, Camp Crawl, long before his passing. In live action, you could claim that the actors audition and skill level determine who gets the role. And that would be fair, but it's totally different with an animated character made of pixels. Well, even that's under question these days when the new Snow White or Ariel can't even sing but are preferred over tons of other actors. I don't know, am I crazy? Yes. Yes, you are. Easy. I feel like I'm living in the Emperor's new clothes. People just disagree with this because it's the right thing to say or whatever, but most people would probably agree with these common sense points deep down. Your takes on reboots, remakes, and Stephen Helmberg aren't common sense points, but are nonsense points. When a character is good, race shouldn't matter. Nor should the new spin you put on the character, whether it's the gimmick you change in the age, the gender, the design more broadly, or their persona and attitude in a larger sense. Even things like the Lion King remake pissed me off because they clearly capitalized on this and it worked by turning one of the greatest animated films in the 90s into a National Geographic documentary with the occasional reminder that it is, in fact, a Lion King reboot. When they're more faithful to the source material like Cinderella or Beauty and the Beast, it doesn't bother me as much. But I don't think Rob Minkoff and Roger Allers crafted the 94 masterpiece with their own hands, just to expect it to get a live-action CG remake when it's pretty much 100% animation for portraying real animals for some reason. Oh, it's all so stupid. Anyway, I can't wait to see a Sadik Shogger Spawn movie. And while they're at it, it wouldn't hurt to race swap one more movie, would it? It does matter. Your ethnic race matters because of where your parents or great-grandparents came from when they entered the United States by plane or boat. This, by the way, is an original Disney movie that is solely based on a novel, The Frog Princess. It is not a race swap. At the time of recording, this video has an infinite amount of dislikes, which is good to see because, well, Asgare's video is trash. Just my personal thoughts on the show I don't like very much, plus other properties. I've seen a new wish, and if you like it, that's totally fine. It's merely a difference of opinion. I understand that Hey So Is Not Timmy, but in my opinion, serves the same purpose because almost all other characters in this show have remained the same. Then why would you now say this and not think about it back then before we had to make this stupid video? I know that people like you barely watch the show because you always judge before you watch things. And I'm so sick of that damn culture from every user on this planet that has said this in the past. Say what you want about Butch Hartman, but I despise seeing a creator's original work being repurposed without their creative input or green light. And as I already shown in the video from TikTok, he's fine with it. So maybe stop speaking for the creator of the show without knowing their intentions behind it. A lot of people have called me racist and other moronic labels. Please think before just hating under a video behind an anonymous profile picture. Number one, you literally called Hazel a black Timmy Turner. That sounds racist to me because Timmy Turner, as we all know, is white. And number two, please think before blindly hating on a new TV show by watching season one first. Because that for me is a common practice to give a show chance before I give my opinion about it. The same tweet that I went to earlier on has gotten a community note. Because that's what you get for making a obvious misleading claim about the show itself. After watching this video, I'm just wondering, sir, can you describe how Hazel is just race swap and gender swap to me? Because they are two different characters in personality and design. Almost every character is the same, except for her. 
how she is not specifically a Timmy race swap. It serves more or less the same purpose. Bad take, it does not serve the same purpose. I don't think you like black people. What a moronic statement. As Gare, you literally said that a sequel series was race swapping Timmy Turner. I don't want to hear it. If multiple people are saying the video gives off racist vibes and your response is to plug your ears and scream la la, it shows an embarrassing lack of self-awareness and a ton of willful ignorance. Do better, little bro. Exactly. And if you're not willing to take that criticism and acknowledge what you said was racist, then you won't improve as a person. People can say whatever they want, doesn't make it true. I don't need advice from you, bro. Trust me. So saying that Hazel is a black Timmy Turner, does it make it true that you're racist? Yeah, I find that hard to believe. Besides, if you think that it serves the exact same purpose, that it's literally the exact same setup of surrounding characters by calling Hazel a race swap version of Timmy Turner, then it's particularly salient that you as Gare made a racist comparison to a new Fairly Odd Parents character that is vastly different from Timmy Turner. For someone who has been a cartoon viewer and a cartoon enthusiast on YouTube for 8 years, you clearly aren't educated on a difference between a reboot, remake, and a sequel. That is mainly because, again, you became brainwashed by these right-wing anti-SJW racists on YouTube who continue to this day to regurgitate the same old 2016 anti-black, anti-Hispanic, anti-Asian, or even anti-Muslim stance of racial representation in anime shows and anime movies. And they're a part of the problem for contributing to this. On top of that, if you're Canadian and you're reviewing a sequel from a well-known beloved animation American series watched by many people all around the world, like The Barely Odd Parents, and you barely watched a new show at all, then you have no credibility as a cartoon reviewer to talk about any of other reboot shows and any sequels of the animated shows. And if you have any integrity left, you'll either admit you were wrong about everything in that shitty video and delete or private that video, or you can continue to tarnish your career and lose thousands of YouTube subscribers. Because you don't deserve any.